Hey, subscribers! Welcome back to another episode of Science with Surback. Today we have a doozy of an episode where we're going to be talking about AP Chemistry section 16.1 through 16.3. And in section 16.1 through 16.3, we start and we look at acids and bases. Now, before we get into the details here, here of these notes, a few things, a few objectives I want you to be able to accomplish by the end of this video. So, number one is to list the general properties that characterize acidic and basic solutions. Objective number two, define the term Bronsted Lowry acid and base and conjugate acid and base. Objective number three, identify the conjugate base associated with a given Bronsted Lowry acid and the conjugate acid associated with a given Bronsted Lowry base. And then the fourth objective that we have here is describe the auto ionization of water and write the ion product constant expression for the equilibrium. So, Let's go ahead and get underway with what is an acid and what is a base. And we actually start out with two uh, different definitions of acids and bases. And actually in total we have a total of three, but we really concentrate on this second one here. Nonetheless here, uh, this first type of acid and base definition is important and that is this Arrhenius acid and base. So this is one of the first definitions of acids and bases and an Arrhenius acid is defined as a substance that when dissolved in water increases the concentration of hydronium or H plus ions. So let me pause and write that down. All right, so there is that definition of an Arrhenius acid. Now, a good example of this, a good example, is going to be HCl or hydrochloric acid in water. Now, uh, another key point here is this. For our acids and our bases, they are, for the most part, unless stated otherwise, dissolved in water. They are aqueous solutions that we are dealing with. Uh, now, an Arrhenius base is defined as a substance that, when dissolved in water, increases the concentrations of OH- ions. So again, let me pause and write that down. All right, so there is that definition of an Arrhenius base. So the big thing here, uh, this, may or may not seem like common sense, but the big thing here, to be an Arrhenius acid or base, you have to have one or two things. For an acid, you have to have this H+. Plus. You have to have hydronium ions, and you have to, for a base, have hydroxide ions. By defining an acid and base in this method the way Arrhenius did, this is going to limit substances that can be acids or bases. There's a lot of things there uh, that don't have a hydroxide ion attached to it and therefore cannot be, cannot be uh, defined as an acid or base in the Arrhenius uh, definition. Now, a better way in a way that we will really uh, run with this to define an acid or a base is that is that of uh, a Bronsted Lowry acid and base? And I know I didn't tell you this, but Bronsted and Arrhenius, these were both the scientists uh, that uh, made these definition definitions of an acid base. Anyways, a Bronsted Lowry acid is defined um, as a species that donates an H plus or a hydronium. Ion. Now I'm going to get a little bit more into detail of that hydronium ion after I write this down. 
All right, so here is where I want to expand on this definition of a bronsted lowry acid. If I just have an H plus ion, essentially all that I have is a proton. And so with a proton here, we can just say, we're gonna more broadly define this as a proton. So essentially what a bronsted lowry acid is, is a proton donator. Now, on the reverse side here, or on the other side, is a bronsted lowry base. A bronsted lowry base is defined as a species that accepts an H+, better known as a proton, ion. So let me pause and write that down. Again, I'm going to add to this definition here of a bronsted lowry acid that this H plus here is essentially just saying, hey, we have a proton that is accepted. Now, the big thing, the big takeaway with a bronsted lowry acid or base is that we can now define an acid or a base on the basis of a transfer of a proton. So let me write that point down right there. All right, so there is that point that I wanted to make here. Uh, a bronsted lowry acid and base, th this allows us to look at a transfer of a proton from one substance to another. There are a lot more chemical reactions that transfer just this one proton and this can help better define what an acid base is or more importantly expand what that uh, meaning or definition of what an acid base is. Now we can get into a little bit more details here with a Bronsted lowry acid and base and it's really really important in this whole uh, idea to be able to identify what is an acid and what is a base. So by our definition of a, a bronsted lowry acid, this is the item that donates an H plus or donates a proton. So in this definition here, we are looking at this which one of these two reactants is donating an H plus? So we have to look at this. We had an H3 and we had H2O as a reactant. Now over here we get NH4 plus. That means this NH3 gained or accepted an H plus. The H2O lost an H plus. So because H2O donates NH plus to NH3, this H2O in this case is going to be defined as an acid by the sense of a Bronsted Lowry uh, definition of an acid. What that also means is that the NH3, because it accepted it, because it accepted that electron or excuse me uh, because it accepted that H plus is a base so it's really important to notice where did that H plus go and what substance in the original reactants is our acid and base so let me write this down here the NH3 accepted accepted an H plus from H2O. That's the actual process that occurred during the chemical reaction. And because NH3 accepted that H+, we now have uh, NH3 becoming that base or being defined as that base. Now we can go a little bit further and we can get into this detail of conjugate acid and base pairs. So a conjugate acid and base uh, is this. Uh, a conjugate acid is simply defined as a chemical species that forms when a proton is added to a base. So again, let me pause and write that down. 
All right, so there is that definition. Now a conjugate base is a chemical species that forms when a proton is removed from an acid. So let me write that down. All right, so there is that definition of a conjugate uh, base. Now, this conjugate, conjugates only differ, so conjugates only differ by one proton or um, by one H plus. That's the only difference here. So to go through this, a better way to go through and identify a conjugate acid and base is to go through a couple of different examples. So right here we have a, an acid base example and what we need to do is this. We need to, to decide which one of these two substances is the acid and which one of them is our base and that way we can assign what is the conjugate acid and base. So if we look at HNO2 over here on the left and we look at what happens to it on the right, it loses an H plus or it donates an H plus to that H2O to make it H3O plus. So because HNO2 donated an H plus, this, this reactant is an acid. Now, this makes H2O, makes H2O a base. Now, we have to decide what is the conjugate acid and what is the conjugate base. So up here, you can't see it now, but a conjugate acid is a chemical species that forms when a proton is added to a base. So in this case, H2O was our base. We add an H plus, so this H3O plus, or we call this hydronium, this is our conjugate, conjugate acid. Now, what this makes NO2 is our conjugate base and just to, to confirm that, just to go through that here to make sure that NO2 is our conjugate base, a conjugate base is a chemical species that forms when a proton is removed from an acid. So our H plus, again proton, is removed from this acid and in that, in that what happens is that this NO2 becomes that conjugate base. So on this next one here, again, identifying what is the acid and the base is helpful in this. So this is the same example that I had from just above and we said that, hey, NH3 is the base and H2O is the acid. So whichever substance uh, forms or gains an additional proton over here on the right, becomes that conjugate acid. So NH4, because it gained a proton, becomes the conjugate acid. Now, what this means here, what this leaves for OH minus is it means that this, it means that this is the uh, conjugate base. And again, the conjugate base is a substance that has or forms when an H, an H plus is removed. All right, so now we have uh, a complete understanding of a Bronsted-Lowry uh, acid and a Bronsted-Lowry uh, base and their conjugates. And now what we can do is we can move on to the strengths of acid. So we start out here with a strong acid. And I'm just gonna go over the definition here. A strong acid is defined as a substance that completely transfers their protons to water. All right, 
So there is that definition of a strong acid. A better way to see this is through an example. Uh, and I'm gonna use a chemical reaction here. We're gonna have HCl, which we know from the lab is a really strong, is a really strong acid. And it's going to be mixed with water. And in this particular acid-base reaction, what is going to happen is the H from the HCl, because it's a strong acid, is going to be completely transferred over to that of water. Now, what this means is that only Cl minus ions remain, only Cl minus ions remain in that particular substance or that particular uh, scenario here. Now, a weak acid is only when partially, only when a substance partially dissociates or transfers uh, their proton in an aqueous solution. So let me write that down. All right, so there's our general definition of a weak acid. Um, but what we have here, again, is another example. And then I want to explain that because it's a little bit more difficult, at least right now, to see what a weak acid is. So what we have here is acetic acid, which is the main component in vinegar. And it is a weak acid. But when it is dissolved in water, combined with water, what happens is this. That's a little bit different than what we had above. We still get H3O plus to form. And we get that uh, acetate ion to form as well. And that is aqueous. And so, yes, we do get an H plus to break off, but the difference here, and I'm gonna write this down in pen, the difference here with this H is not 100% or all of, of this H breaks apart. And it's a little bit hard or difficult to see that right now. But what happens here is that some acetic acid actually stays together. Only a little bit of that acetic acid or a little bit of this H here breaks off and forms up with that H2O. And that will be something that we'll see a little bit later as we talk more in depth and we do some more calculations with our, um, with our weak acids. All right, so with our general trends, uh, there is one major uh, general trend is that the stronger the acid is, the weaker the conjugate base will be, and that's vice versa there. So again, let me write that down, and we will uh, talk about it here in just a second. All right, so there is our general trend. And this trend will make a little bit more sense as we start to do some calculations with, um, as we start to do some calculations with acids, uh, strong acids and strong uh, bases, and then also weak acids and weak bases. You'll start to see that transfer there. All right, so moving on here. Uh, to a pretty unique property of water. Water has a lot of unique properties, but when we talk about water in terms of an acid and base, it has a couple of different things. One, one of the major things here is that we can have H2O act as a base, and we can also have H2O act as an acid. So because in some scenarios, and we've already seen it in the examples if you haven't noticed, because water in itself can act as a base or it can act as an acid, what we call this by definition is we call a substance like this as an 
amphotoric, excuse me, let me try that again, amphoprotic uh, substance. So right here, water is an amphiprotic substance. And so what an amp, amp, amphiprotic substance is, is it is a substance that can behave as either an acid or as a base. So let me write that down. All right, so there is that definition of an amphiprotic substance. Now, um, water is a great example of an amphiprotic substance. There'll, there'll be others, but water is our big example here. So now we move down uh, below here and we get to this thing called this iron, iron, how about ion product of water. And so what the ion product of water is, is something that we first have to take a look at the actual um, equation of water, liquid water, acting as an acid and at the same time one of these water molecules is going to act as a base. So what happens here based on the bronsted lowry definition of an acid and a base we get we get H3O plus one of these protons H pluses is donated and and we get OH minus now one thing unique and we really haven't talked about the equation here is this one acid and bases equations are at equilibrium that was a point i should have made but they are at equilibrium and then another thing to make here is because they are at equilibrium we can write the kc for water so for this process here, remember our Kc is products over reactants, but there is only, only aqueous substances and only, only, um, only aqueous substances and there is only um, gases. That's the word I was looking for. So in our Kc here, there's only aqueous substances on that product side. So when we write the Kc, we get the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus, and that is our Kc. Now, because we are dealing with water, because we are dealing with water, what actually happens here is this. We can call Kc actually just KW. It means the same thing, and I'm just going to rewrite that. And with this in mind, we have a defined value for KW. So KW, the, the, the equilibrium constant for water in this particular equation, is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Again, K is unitless, and this is a really, really, really small K. Uh, so we had um, to talk about equilibrium, we could. The other thing I want to do is this. Our last point here is we can do two, two things done with KW. And that first is this. One, we can find H3O plus concentrations. Remember the brackets mean concentrations. So we can find H3O plus concentration and we can find OH minus concentrations. So just a little side note here. We can find these values. And that's gonna be really important when we start talking about actually pH. So we move down in here and we put this 
application to the test of the uh, ion product or the dissociation um, of water. So our last part here is just some applications. You might wanna keep that page handy, uh, but it's just some applications of what we have or what we have just talked about. So we wanna know what is the value of H plus in OH minus in a neutral solution at 25 degrees Celsius. All right, so a couple of things that we have to think about in this top problem. Number one, we know that Kw of water, we just got done talking about this, is the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus. Now on that previous page, I gave you what the concentration of Kw was, and that was, I'm just gonna insert it, one times 10 to the negative 14. And then we have to think about this. A neutral solution means that these two things are equal. So this is really like an X times an X. We don't know it, but they're both equal. Now, if we go through this process here, we would have one times 10 to the negative 14th equal x squared. To get this by itself, we take the square root of both sides, and I'm gonna grab my calculator and calculate this out on my example here. So all I'm going to do is this. I'm gonna start out with the square root, and I am going to take one times 10 to the negative 14th. And so when I do this, I get this long decimal, which I will tell you, I would rather have it in scientific notation. It's not wrong if you do that, but I get a value, can't really see it there, of one times 10 to the negative seventh power. So our x, our x inadvertently is one times 10 to the negative seventh. And so that means the concentration of H3O plus because it was set equal to x is one times 10 to the negative seventh. And then the concentration of OH minus is also one times 10 to the negative seventh. And both of these things have the unit of M4 concentration. So moving up here, moving up in to this second problem, we wanna know what is the H plus, the concentration of H plus in a solution with a OH minus of 0 0.010 molar? So again, Kw, Kw is equal to H3O plus times OH minus. So Kw from the last page, Kw from the last page is one times 10 to the negative 14th we don't know our H3O plus. And I should stop here. H plus, H plus and H3O plus can be used interchangeably. Now, it gave us the concentration of OH minus, which was 0 0.010. And what I can do is this. I'm gonna take uh, one times 10 to the negative 14th, and I'm going to divide it, I'm going to divide it by 0 0.01. And so what I get, the concentration for the H3O plus is going to be one times 10 to the 12th. So our concentration of H3O plus is, is one times 10 to the negative 12th, and again, the concentration is in molars. All right, so uh, we get down here with our last problem, and we wanna calculate the H plus and a solution with, oh, I wrote that one down here. So uh, just say same as number two. All right, so, uh, that concludes section 16.1 through 16.3.
Um, hope you've enjoyed, hope you learned some things on this. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.